Sexy People Podcast. I'm Dan Frigolette. I'm here with Mrs. Robinson, my guest. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, you were just, I, want, I, I, I don't want to deprive people of this. You were just doing like facial exercises pre-interview. Do you do, you do a lot of, do you do, do you do this red leather, yellow leather, this kind of, do you know these? I do know what you're talking about. I do it a little bit differently. My daughter's actually a professional singer, so I do a lot of like, <laughs> just like fit and weird face exercises. Yeah, yeah. I think we've all been there. We're like we uh, we're like we we don't know how the day's going, and then we wake up and we're like, my face doesn't want to smile today. And you're already yeah. out in public, and you're like, well, I, that's just that's what yes. we're gonna do now. Right. <laughs> um, can I ask you? Okay, so let's. I want to start here. How long have you been a dirty slut? Professionally uh, or <laughs> just in general? Well, however you want to answer. Yeah. So I was a hoe in high school, a pretty big hoe. Um, you were a hoe in preschool? High school. Oh, oh high my school. gosh. Yeah. No, I didn't get to be a hoe until high school. I didn't lose my virginity until I was like 15. And then um, I just embraced it. And it's funny now that I do porn. I'm like, I've been training my whole life for this. So yeah, I was a pretty big hoe. And um, I didn't like back then how it wasn't okay for women for girls. And I mean, it was for me, but I just I found it annoying that you know, I could get a bad reputation because I like to have sex. But, you know, then I lived a pretty prim and proper life kind of coupled with not so I'm really like a, an oxymoron of strangeness. And um, I don't even know how to answer that. But professionally, I've been a hoe for three and a half years. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just like I just want I just like having these uh, these awful sound bites uh, that we yeah. can use for something. Oh, I've got them for you. You have no idea. I don't know if you saw my Barstool Sports podcast, but uh, that podcast that sound bite has made the rounds. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you just you were just in uh, Hustler magazine. Explain that experience to me. I mean, it's it's a written interview. Um, yeah. From the standpoint of. Um, a, like how great that is, how good that feels from the standpoint of like what Hustler is to the industry. Uh, start there and then I, I then have a follow up. Yeah. So um, when I got involved in the industry, it started off with an OnlyFans page and I hadn't expected the page to do so well. And I hadn't anticipated going into mainstream porn and both I was wrong <laughs> about both of those. <laughs> and um, I, I'm. I've got a pretty strong social media presence, even though Instagram takes down my accounts. I've got, they keep taking me down. They took down what are you my- up to? How many are you up to? Well, they, the accounts, 12. Yeah. 12 and no. 13 I'm on now. Yeah, they wow. hate me. They, I'm face banned. I have to like use a filter sometimes. It's just been terrible, but they took you down use a, a, what? Two, a filter sometimes or I put You're a mask face on. Banned. I'm face banned, IP banned. I have phones everywhere because I just have to keep buying new phones. SIM cards don't work. They've got my Wi-Fi banned. It's I have VPNs. They took down a two million follower account and a three hundred forty five thousand account, and those were my babies. And so now yes. I'm at like thirty thousand followers. I've lost brand deals. I've lost my clout, and it's it's kind of like. I can't believe how much I depend on that stuff, but I do. And so that's kind of been shitty. Oh, can I swear? We're talking about porn. Please swear. Okay. All right, cool. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> I mentioned the social media because, um, Missy Martinez, who wrote the article for Hustler, um, is somebody I've been following and she's just such a badass. And she actually interviewed me around Christmas time. You know, what do porn stars want for Christmas? And, um, I did a little article there. I don't know if there was a picture in it or not. But then for this article, it was a really big deal because it was kind of a full circle thing, um, pulling in the top, you know, some of the top performers and OnlyFans. And so it was kind of an honor. I remember Hustler when I was younger. And, you know, when guys had that, it was it was a big deal that, you know, I'm showing my age, I'm 52. And you know, Hustler's always been a big deal. I know the whole Larry Flint story. So when they chose me for it, I was like, holy shit. And that's what keeps happening, Dan. When these things happen to me, I'm in shock. And I just can't believe it. Like I was nominated for two awards this year, um, AVN Hottest MILF of the Year and um, XBiz Best MILF Social Media Star. Congrats. And 
Yeah, no, I mean, thank you. I didn't win and I shouldn't have won. Um, my friend Alexis Fox won one of them and I think Cherie DeVoe won the other and they should have. They're like such badasses. But like... I never brag about that stuff. I'm just continuously in shock about it. I'm like, what? Like, I just can't believe it. So with yeah. Hustler, I was like, this is so cool. And they sent me an issue of it. And um, they followed me on social media. And they actually just messaged me on Instagram about something. And I was like, what is this? Like, what is happening? Yeah. <laughs> How did this come to life? <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, it was really cool. And and those numbers the uh, the it, it mentioned the numbers and it, and it mentions that you're the top uh, what is zero point one percent of OnlyFans. Yeah. Um, what's the word I want? Uh, um, um, zero point zero one percent creator. Yeah, you know creator. what? Yeah, yeah. T- to be fair, those percentages really don't matter anymore. Uh, they mattered in the beginning when we were all around COVID time when everyone was just making insane silly money and the percentage was showing your fan count. A percentage of your fan was your fan count and the other percentage was how much money you were making. Right. And then what happened were uh, what, what happened was there were these girls who had pages and they started selling, you know, when you're on OnlyFans and you see ads um, for other girls yes. on someone's page. Yes. So, I mean, we all do that. It's, you know, we I do it to do, you know, give them a solid and right. I don't charge well, the, what these well, other girls charge. <laughs> and well, and the reason why, so I, I could, we could talk about this forever, but the reason why it's frustrating for your side and then and then viewer side is that like so for your side is that the only is not helping you get any more subscribers they're not helping you market there's no way to pay money even to like market within the site so and then as a and as a viewer was a lot of times when i go to a page for the first time and i subscribe for the first time if the first like 20 photos aren't the person I actually don't even know necessarily who I subscribe to. So right. it's a frustrating, weird, I don't want to say loophole. It's just a weird process that's been created out of necessity. Yes. Um, and, but to piggyback on that, the girls were taking payment via OnlyFans tips, which yeah. was falsely um, pumping up their revenue, even though it wasn't their revenue, they were selling ad space. So the percentage system isn't real anymore. And I don't even, I don't even, it fluctuates, but I don't even look at it anymore because it's, it doesn't matter. The metrics on it are, um, they're pointless. So it doesn't even really matter, but. So how do you stay consistent? Are you, you said, you said that during the pandemic, the money was crazy. Um, And that tracks. Uh, I don't know. Do you think it was just, do you think it was just boredom and being home or do you think it was like the marketing itself um why was everybody making such crazy money and how much has it declined Sure yeah so I think COVID had a lot to do with it because there were so many people, I can't remember what the number was, you know, a hundred million people joined OnlyFans as a creator and creators, right. so there were a lot more people doing it so you know, you have, if you, each of those people tells one friend, they're joining and they tell another friend and it was a lot of word of mouth and then using the Telegram app to, um, you know, buy promo from people and the money was great and people were home. I mean, there were a lot of quarantines and the fan base isn't just United States, it's across the world. And so I have a lot of fans from the UK, Germany, and, um, you know, they were on lockdown a little more than us. I have a lot of Australian fans. They were really right. on lockdown. So since like the Canada pandemic, almost like um, Canada almost never left lockdown and Australia, like same thing. It just kept, yes. it just kept extending. Right. My Canadian audience is crazy. I've got a ton of guys, um, from Canada, but the more the restrictions were lifted, the less money we were making and pe- the girls are people jerking off less. Why is it? Why is it getting less? Um, I think people are outside more. Um, they're still jerking off, but <laughs> the thing is, there's a difference between Pornhub and OnlyFans. You know, the guys yeah. that don't understand OnlyFans, they use Pornhub because to them, if they want to jerk off, they go to Pornhub, they find what they're looking for, they jerk off their cock, and they go. OnlyFans is, I know so much about so many of these guys. Um, you know, I've developed personal friendships with them um, online, of course, only. But yeah. 
it's a more personalized experience. And I think people were really lonely during the pandemic and it really gave them a way to have conversations and connect with other people. And they don't need that as much now because now they're out and about a little more. They're still jerking off. I know that for sure. Yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah. So it, it really was, um, it was a call. It was a combination of factors. And I also think, um, I think it was a, a very good period of time for people actually paying for their porn. I think we used to really have to focus uh, on this podcast in particular on like telling people to pay for their porn. It's like you like yeah. somebody in the industry, you got to pay for your stuff. And so OnlyFans finally like put us all in a position where, where we where we know that if we give money somewhere, it's going directly to the person we want to get it to, a little, yes. to, to an extent, or at least we think that. Right. Right. Um, <laughs> Not to speak to whatever the the you know the the huge cuts are or whatever, um, but yeah, and 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 that and that's a good that's a better feeling. Um, yeah, let's speak to let's speak to the idea that like uh, porn for a long time was about anonymity. Porn for a long time was about like trying to protect yourself. Porn for a long time was about like not letting people know where you lived or like what your family structure was and how. Only fans and camming and, you know, and things before that have sort of uh, shifted that idea. Um, how do you feel as a performer? I mean, even with social media, um, with the amount a fan can intrude or, 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 um, or understand your life? Yeah. So I am... You know, I, I live in Western Pennsylvania. I live near Pittsburgh and I don't live in LA. If I lived in LA, it would be a totally different story. Everybody there is doing something and nobody cares. I live right. in Western PA. I have to tell you this story too that happened. And this will really explain to you just how different it is to live in Western Pennsylvania than it is to live in New York or LA. People here don't get it. I live in a suburb, very Stepford wifey. I'm a single mom. I have a teenager and then I have a 26 year old daughter. Her name's Amber Blake. She also has an OnlyFans, but that's for another moment here. But okay. um yeah. So I like, would you are you pumping it? I feel like I like that I like this mother daughter pump. Yeah. Well, we have very strict boundaries with it and um you know, we do promote each other and yeah. but never anything like look at my daughter's pussy. Like I'm not going to do that, but right. look, my daughter's has her OnlyFans, for, you know, 50% off today and I will do that. But sure. um and it's so weird because I was like quintessential soccer mom here and yeah. um, chaperone mom and PTA mom. I was the president of the PTA and not anymore. <laughs> but anyway, so here I'm very, very private. Are there people who know my real name and know that I'm Mrs. Robinson? Absolutely. But sure. I don't publicize it. Everything I do when I do a podcast, when um, everything is Mrs. Robinson and it's for my protection, my safety, my kids' safety, and, um, it's illegal to dock someone. So last week, oh no, two weeks ago, I went to a school board meeting as a parent of the community and yeah. I spoke at the meeting as a parent of the community. And when I was sitting down, we've got a lot of like political shit going on here and like right. everywhere else. And I, I didn't say well, much to, of anything. To put background in case, in case we do reach um, a, a, a large uh, audience outside of like understanding what maybe like Pittsburgh and, and Western PA is Western PA and I'm going to say the things so that, and you could disagree, but this is my perspective. Western PA, um, Pittsburgh, um, Philadelphia even too is the Eastern PA. There's a, there's a lot of cities in the East Coast that have a character where all that we really ever had in those cities was like sports and like being American. And so the numbers of people that feel a certain way about being American and, um, yes. and, and, and feel a certain way about all the isms um, is, is a higher percentage in these places. And Western PA in particular. I had a show halfway through Pennsylvania in a place called Altoona. And, I'm familiar um, with it, yeah. It Home of sheets. It's always a problem. Like, and I've been everywhere in the world, like Alaska yeah. and back. And out, every time we did a show in Altoona, Pennsylvania, something racist, sexist, hateful would happen. Mm -hmm. And so that's the kind of place we're talking about. That's my opinion. 
Yeah, and, and you're absolutely right. Now, the community that I'm in, we've got a very small subset of people who are very vocal, but they're a smaller group, but they're very vocal. And then the group that I'm with, we're a larger group and we're kinder. And I spoke about something. It was the what I spoke about was irrelevant. And I spoke, and as I was sitting down, one of the Karens in the back said, Thanks, Mrs. Robinson. Hilarious. And I said, That's porn mom to you, baby. And you might want to check your husband's DMs and winked at her. And I sat yeah. down. And I thought that was it. Well, the next day, my friend called me and said, So and so doxed you. That bitch doxed. doxed. What's doxed? Doxing, what it's particularly um, for online digital people who need to maintain their privacy. Um, it's when you give somebody's full name, their stage name, you know, where they're from, their address, whatever it might be, this information. And this dumb bitch, she's a teacher. She doxed me. My friend's like, she doxed you. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like she preaches, oh, it's all about the kids. No, it's not. If it were all about the kids, you would care about my child and not put my safety at risk just because you don't like what I said at a school board meeting. Right. So I had to call my attorney. I'm like, we need to send a cease and desist. And then, and you were going to love this, Karen, she's like the biggest Karen. She took it even further, Dan. Right. And she said on this post, and Mrs. Robinson, she was basically saying all of the role play porn that I've done, you know, teacher student, um, stepson porn, basically saying she admits to doing you know, teacher porn with all our former students. And I was like, she thinks that's real life. Holy shit. Right. Like this woman's sex life must be really bad because, right. it, and, and it caused a lot of problems. And I've been given the opportunity. My attorney is like, this is a slam dunk for you. You can have, she will lose her job. Like what she did, right. she accused me of doing something. I was a teacher in my twenties in this community. Yeah. So she portrayed it as if I was out having sex with a bunch of students that I used to have in this community. Right. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like it's porn, you dummy. Like well, it's and her not implication real life. Is also that that you're um, that you're like doing something illegal, being with people yeah. that are that are underage. No, right? that not necessarily. Just that morally, she's the moral police. Just that morally, yeah. I have had sex with former students in the community, which puts my um, character into question. And I might right. do porn. But my character, I feel really good about it. I'm a kind person. I help people. I'm a good mom. I'm a good friend. I'm a good daughter. Like, I'm okay with me when I put my head down at night. And for her to say that, it kind of tarnished me as a teacher. You know, the years I spent teaching that were really important right. to me. And I thought, how dare you? And my attorney said, do you want to go? Like, that's defamation. It is slam right. dunk. And I was like... I don't know if I have it in me right now. If she says anything else, I'm going for her. But um, yeah, but so that's, you know, the privacy thing is important to me. And I, I do my best to just be Mrs. Robinson online and the social media aspect. I do share my dog a lot because Rudy is my best friend. Um, and then my daughter's on there, too, in a different kind of um, she doesn't do mainstream or anything. And um but you know, we'll post pictures at Christmas time on Instagram, things like As that. As a family, not, yeah. not not in the uh, not in this persona. Exactly. And we we yeah. just did yeah, exactly. And um I have a teenager, my teenager's 16 years old, and when I started doing OnlyFans, I I'm very open as a parent and I sat yeah. down with my kid and had a very frank conversation because the type of parent I am, I don't want to do anything that's going to negatively impact my kid. And so right. I mean, of course, parents always embarrass their kids, <laughs> but this is like next level. And we had a conversation. I won't bore you with the details, but in the end, my kids said, why do you care what people think, mom? Get that bag. And I was like, That's what? That's fantastic. What yeah. a response. And you know what? what? My kid hasn't been bullied. And yeah. It's like, yeah, it's just been fine. They, my kid doesn't care at all. And, pe so, and people always say, hold on, let me just say one more thing. I'm sorry. People always say, she's wrong. Her kid cares. She just doesn't know. Her kid's lying to her. And I'm like, my kid's really not lying to me. We are that open in our house yeah. that we talk about everything. So those are other yeah. people talking <laughs> from their insecurities. That's all exactly. that is. Okay, wait. So, so many things. Um, I know. So I know. This is so awesome. On. You're the best, Dan. Okay. I'm, not you. I'm just letting you, you such a dense thing you just, you just dropped on me. Okay. So to start with. Um, okay. So. 
Did you did you and your daughter start OnlyFans at the same time, or or are you the inspiration for her to do it, or vice versa? Neither. Um, what happened was she is a professional singer. She was a lead vocalist on a European cruise line, and COVID hit. And so she came back to, she went back to New York City where she had been living and then realized like New York was a little terrifying there for a while. I mean, we walked yeah. through Times Square and I'm like, this is nuts. I felt like I was in a Will Smith movie, except I didn't get slapped. But um, I, she was like, I just need to come back to Western PA. And she came back and I had already been doing what I was doing. And then one day she's like, hey, mom. And she named her four friends. We're all going to start an OnlyFans. And I kind of like looked up at the sky, the universe, whatever's out there. I'm like, really? Really? You get putting my kid in porn now? Okay, motherfucker. <laughs> like, really? So she didn't and, know. No, she knew I was doing it, but oh, she, she was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm very open. She knew I was doing it, but she was like, I just wanted to let you know my friends and I are doing it. You know, yeah. are you okay with that? And I was like. I did try to talk her out of it. I'm like, you are a lot younger than me, but these millennials, they are, um, they don't care. They don't care what people think. Yes. And well, I, well, okay. So here, I tried to explain this to a friend of mine who is my age, but, 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 um, exhibits behavior and thoughts that are <laughs> of a much older person. And yeah. I was trying to explain that like the only fans thing, because I have an only fans and mine is not to the level of most people's or professionalism. It's just, um, yeah. it's, it's, it's number one, um, you know, to, to quench certain, uh, appetites. And, and I like the, I like when I film it and do things. Yeah. Uh, and then too, it's like, you know, it's like, who am I to interview people? Uh, if I wouldn't put myself in that same light, but I was trying to explain, um, to my friend that like everybody younger than me is already sending nudes to everyone. So like this idea that like when we first started sending nudes, uh, my generation, and I'm a little bit younger than you, um, the big thing was like never have your face in it and never have like things where people could tell who you are and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then it just got, it has gotten looser and looser and looser over 25 years. And yeah. now straight up people like, even in my dating life now, like I'll get nudes before I've even met a person. That's where oh. we're at as a society. So this thing where, where like the fear of like having a nude photo show up somewhere later in life like you couldn't be president if someone's seen your cock I, right. it just i don't think it's gonna hold up no nope. and so the 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 stakes are lower um yeah but i will say okay so i did a western pa thing and i went to go do a church show where everyone knew i was doing a g-rated show for children and i got there and they said, um, hey, uh, it's come to our attention that you're a porn star. And it, and it had this vibe. It felt like your PTA meeting. Um, and, and, it, and this is before I had an OnlyFans, before even OnlyFans existed. And I, I just, I felt when he said that to me, this, just this weird feeling that like people are talking about it. You know, like this weird, like rumor mill, like high school chatty, like yes. awful vibe. Um, and I was like, oh, that's not true at all. And then right. he wasn't sufficed, the pastor. He wasn't sufficed. So I had to keep explaining, and I was like, "Well, I interview porn stars um, under the uh, understanding that we're trying to come to a mutual place of uh, understanding and appreciation and acceptance." Right. And he was like, "Okay, let me go talk to the congregation." And then he comes <laughs> back and he goes, "We don't want you to do the show, but we'll pay you." And I was like, "I was, I, I was just happy I didn't have to do the performance because yeah. it, it's already hard to perform for kids." But I was appalled that this was a thing. Yeah, um, it is appalling. It is. It's completely appalling. So so what happened um, now with your relationships in the BTA? Like how many people in that room do you think after she said Mrs. Robinson were finding out for the first time? None. So everybody in there knew. So she was just using it as a way to discredit you as someone who she already knows. She's already decided that no matter what your opinion is, she's going to disagree with it. That's the person exactly. she is. Yes. I and she it. even said in the on the public comment thing online, um, I bet you're really proud of your decision to leave teaching um, for this morally superior lifestyle. Yeah. It's and I interesting. was like... So I worked in software and advertising. I lived in Don Draper land. That was my last job I had when I retired. And I worked in advertising. I had worked my ass off to climb the corporate career ladder. And it's hard to be a woman in that industry. And I had done a really good job of garnering respect and working really hard. And that industry was a lot rougher than porn is. Like, that was Hilarious. rough. That's, for, you know, yeah. 
it was the Don Drapers of the world that were my clients. And, um, and it just, it was like, I, I've never thought that before. Some of the smartest people I've met are, are porn stars. Have and you ever savvy. talked to Sheree, yeah, Sheree DeVille? Yeah. Fucking brilliant. Fucking yeah. brilliant. Yeah. And, and, and the more the industry changes, the, the more it's highlighting those people and those skills. I, 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 um, I've been holding this opinion that like people that are like that are like tech savvy and maybe even and this is an extreme opinion, maybe even people that are like on the spectrum are more like probably capable of building humongous followings, people that can figure out the Internet, figure <laughs> out algorithms and do those sorts of things. Yes. I think those people are and those are not people that we've sexualized in the past. You That's know? right. That's um, me. I used every skill I had in corporate yeah. America and applied it to this because I've had people say to me. I don't know if you've ever heard of Holly Hotwife. Her husband, Vince, she and Vince are friends of mine. And Vince, when I first met them, were like, we were like, where did she come from? And I was like, I just knew how to brand myself. And I knew how to target. And I know demographics. And I know metrics and data. That's all it was. It, I mean, there aren't a lot of 52-year-olds that joined you know, the porn world that late. But um even so, it is all about branding and um, being able, just like you said, to know what you're doing. And and I really say that it's that for me more so than how I look. I'm not like some knockout, you know. I'm not ugly, but I'm not like some crazy gorgeous person that that's why. It's harder for these younger girls. There are so many of them. And there aren't a lot of me. I, so I've been doing... Um... I just reread a book called uh, Dean and Me. It's, uh, it's by Jerry Lewis. Okay. And there's this thing that they talk about in there. And 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 then I, and there's a lot of uh, Lucille Ball stuff right now mm, happening. Nice. Right? There's a lot of movies and documentaries and things like that. And so um, at that period of time in Hollywood and coming out of vaudeville and then and movies becoming things. And they're at that cusp when there's movies and then they're like and then there's talkies and everything's changing. And they understood then. The thing that we're trying to avoid now, which was like, if you pick a label and you rock with that label, you can just be more successful. Yeah. And I know we live in this world where it's like that we don't want to do that. We want to like uh, de-label and de-characterize and, and de-specify. Um, but picking something and marketing directly to that. Yes. You can find like an audience for that thing, right? And that's yes. that's a mistake I've made in comedy. It's like I don't I can't sum up my my comedy in a in a sentence or a few words, right? Like yours yeah. is nailed. You decided your uh your MILF um and your uh, I don't know what well, what are what are your what are your specific like 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 marketing labels that you're hitting? Yeah, so I am um your friend's mom, 52, the internet's yeah. favorite redhead, stepmom, yeah. MILF, and c cougar and teacher. Yeah, so I've got a little bit of everything. Yeah. So easy. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can make sure you show up in all those searches, right? Yeah. That's, that's right. And that's brilliant. That's fantastic. Thanks. Thanks. Um, so, I, okay, so here's the thing I did on the internet when I got, I got trolled yesterday. Mm hmm um, I went on someone who's a comedian who, who is only now after the Trump organization posting, uh, racist stuff. It's not even comedy content. It's just like a video of a black person. And then he's like calling them a thief. I'm, 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 I'm like skimming it to it's like, to it's like worst, yeah. but that's pretty much what's happening. Um, and so I commented on there and I was like, I'll die of shock if you ever pass judgment on a white person. Yeah. Um, and we're co-Italians. Um, and so, uh, so as Italians, we also, we like, we can, we can, we can easily make fun of uh, regular white people. We, we yeah. think that we're a different group, but so I posted that on there and then his fans came for me. And so somebody was like, uh, they were going on all of my comedy videos and posting how they weren't funny. And I decided oh, that my revenge was that I was going to go on his page. Um, and then I just, since it was open, I found his wife. I found his daughter, I found his son, and I found his mom, and I followed all of them. Wonderful. Um, so in a couple days, his wife is going to get around to checking her regular person Instagram. She's going to be like, who is Dan Frigolette? And he's going to be like, I have no idea. And her response is going to be, well, your daughter, your son, and your mother are following him on Instagram. Um, so I think that's a good revenge. I do, too. I, don't know I like how to, that. I don't know how to do that to your PTA lady. Yeah. Um, 
It's sickening. But, yeah. I, I don't know either. I think just them knowing that um, some of their husbands really are in my DMs. A hundred percent. And they don't know who they are, but they know I know. So yeah. that kind oh, of Oh, you specifically good. know. Oh, I thought you meant theoretically. No, you really know. Yes. And I saw a, a meme yeah. today that was I saw a meme today that was I don't have time to fight. I'm just going to I'm just going to fuck your husband and go on with my day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I do post because they apparently they're watching my porn, the Karens, which is really creepy to me that they're watching it, but whatever. Um, to watch it to watch it with hate in your heart, I think is I think is hilarious, isn't it? Actually. And so now, since I know they're following me, um, I posted something on Instagram the other day, and I, my quote, I, my caption under it was, "This goes out to all the Karens in my neighborhood, and and of course also to your husbands." So I really enjoy that Amazing. kind of stuff, and Amazing. But they're evil, you know. They're like a second. Um, they're a separate kind of evil that I. I can pull it out of my back pocket. I too am Italian. My dad is an OG, you know, from Brooklyn from many, many years ago. My dad's almost 80 now. And so I do have that in me, yeah. but I'm really trying to help them. They really don't yeah. want to go there. So there's something about being Italian where we have like a, we have like a, 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 a secondary level of pettiness that I think not everybody gets to have. Yes. Like literally every time somebody like, does anything tiny to me, like even as little as like not like wishing me happy birthday in my head, some old Italian man is in there being like, you're cut off. You're cut. Yeah. You're out of my will. Yeah. Like, I don't have a will. Yeah. I don't have anybody. To, I don't have anything I know to what give you. you. Yeah. I, I'm the same way. Yeah. I remember you're cut it all. off. Mm -hmm. that's yeah. So in fact, it was funny. So my dad's almost 80 and just recently I was over there and I had mentioned like, yeah, I'm getting together. Um, with my sorority sisters from college and he's like will susan be there now i graduated how long ago was it 30 years ago and he's like will she be there I'm like susan yeah susan will be there i hate her i'm like oh that's hate like, her? like that what did she do <laughs> he's like don't you remember that one time and i'm like oh my god dad like really and right yeah i was like are you kidding me like off <laughs> yeah. out of my life forever yeah what yeah. happened? He remembers. It wasn't even anything. Yeah. I don't even remember what it was, but I I just thought, wow, he has so much going on. He's holding on yeah. to. <laughs> right. Well, for Italians, it can be something as easy as like a, a thing that they thought was like outside manners. Um, some kind of like, like uh, uh, some like slight that, that was not directed at anybody. Well, they didn't yes. say hi to me when they walked in the house. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Uh, yes. what we're, what we're capable, the, the amount of, of pettiness we're capable of I agree. as a group. Yeah, and I what's agree. funny is I don't think Italians would disagree with that at all. No, no, no. I'm I, I agree. I don't, know why we, I don't know why we do that. Um, so yeah, so this lady, this lady, I hope this lady thing resolves itself because that that is a level of that's just something you don't need to hold on to. No, because no. she's doing enough of that on her own, and I hate that we're in a place where all we want to do is is be divisive with like. Our, our, like our neighbors, like as like yeah. as close as we can to hating somebody who lives nearby, we're trying to do. Yes, um, it's sickening, and that's the interesting thing. I was um, I was talking with my teenager, and I I thought I said something like, "Of all the people, I knew I would eventually get doxxed, and but I never thought it would be another mom in my community doing it. I thought it would be, you know, some dumb kid and." You know, Interesting. I really didn't expect it to be a mom in my community, but she made the rules and um, I'm still toying with the idea of um, filing charges because yeah. I can't let that happen. And I let one person do it. And then what? So, right. I don't right. know. Yeah. Well, we'll I see. like, I like the idea that, that, um, that, that you shut her down. Um, I mean, <laughs> It's tough. It's a, it's a closed minded, uh, like, like person and, and idea. And you do, I mean, you have to protect your thing, but I don't know. I, it's interesting to me now that I'm, now that I'm in therapy, like, <laughs> um, I feel like the only people that would like, like come for me are people that like are me and like relate to like the, so it's like her insecurities are all the things that are driving this thing. So of course, yes. um, 
it's a mom in the community. Like it makes the most sense for me. Like, like somebody yeah. who watches your stuff and it was a kid, um, they're not, they don't have a problem and they don't want no. to destroy that either. No, they don't. And I'm in therapy too. I've been with my therapist for 30 years now. I still can't believe I'm 30 years. Up. Yeah. Woo! 30 years <laughs> yeah, is, 30 is years. a place of 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 solutions i've yeah. been in like one year and one year is just a place of like more problems so like i know now that i'm the problem <laughs> and i've dropped all the things that i built um that were negative to protect myself but now i'm just out there hurting myself and others because i have no protection and i'm still doing the things yeah. it's the worst place yeah <laughs> no i know what you mean i know i get it yeah and i you know before i got into and before I started my OnlyFans, I talked in depth with my therapist who knows my children about, too. And about whether about, or not you're going to do it? About whether or not I was going to do it, how to approach it with my children. And my therapist used to be the um, director of Children, Youth, and Family in Western Pennsylvania. He actually created the programs and I trust him implicitly. He is, yeah. he's like the man. I just adore him. And you know, I said, here's what I'm thinking. What do you think? And I want to go to the teenager. And do you think that's crazy? And he said, no, absolutely not. And he said, you won't know. And I know you can't live with yourself if it's something that will affect them. And um, he said, most parents wouldn't do that. And, you know, I've gotten feedback from non-fans that are like, I can't believe you let your child make that decision. And I said, you're missing it. My child didn't make any decision. I needed to know how my child felt about it before I was okay with doing it. And when my kid was like, so what? Like, get the bag. Who cares what people think? I was like, like, it sent chills through my spine. Even today when I, I mentioned that statement that my kid made, because I spent the whole first half of my life caring what everybody thought. Right. Like I really did. And this came out of nowhere. People who know me, I lost a lot of acquaintances and friends because they're like, oh, I can't believe she's doing that. How? Right. Oh, my gosh. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I me either. But here we are. So, like, get with the program or move the fuck on. So. What do you, you know, think somebody who cuts you out of their life because of what you're doing and it doesn't affect them, what do you think they're thinking? Like, what do they think the justification is or the basis to, like, um, disconnect from you? Like, how are you harming them? What do you I think know. their thought process is? I really don't know because I can't understand it. Um, but I'm also of the feeling... You know, I have a handful of friends who we've all got our thing. We've all got something fucked up about us. I really believe that. And we can choose to love people where they're at. And, you know, I have one friend, she she lies all the time about things, not important things, but I love her. She's got my back. I've known her my whole life and she's wonderful. But there are certain things I, uh, you know, everybody, I don't want to say they serve a purpose, but I'm very well aware of what to say and not say to certain people. And I love her in spite of that. And that's how I feel about people that I love unconditionally, that I'm not going to love every decision anyone makes, but it's yeah. not for me to approve or not approve. And that's what I don't understand. It's none of your business what I do for a living. And, yeah, you know, I, I it's, we. I can't, I don't understand, but it is what it is. And they made the rules and so now they have to lay in their bed. I had one girl, how about this last week? I had been friends with her for 20 years. She just stopped talking to me. She was gossiping about me. And so when I find out these things, I just quietly go into like Facebook and all my socials and I just delete them or block them. And I just don't talk to them anymore. Yeah. And she wasn't calling me anyway, but out of the blue, she called me last week, left me a voicemail and it was like, Hey, so I heard from so-and-so and they said that you're upset with me about something I said. And I just really wanted to apologize to you. I'm not sure what I did, but I wanted to apologize. And I know this sounds crazy, but I'm really in a jam and you're probably the only person who could help me with that. Would you? And then she started to cry. So will you please call me back? And I sat there and I went on the voicemail on the voicemail. And I thought, Hmm. Wait, walk me through what your thought process is here. What do you think? Yeah. Are I, you are you sullied, number one, that like the only reason she's calling and apologizing is because she needs something? Are you sullied that at this moment in time, are you sullied that um, she's apologizing for a thing that she doesn't know what it is, even though we both know what it is? Or, um, like, how do you feel about an apology that someone's giving that... So... I, I'm finally in, in the belief that if you give the apology, that is actually 
a huge step because plenty of people know that they did something wrong and then they won't apologize. People that are apologizing and pretending they don't know what they did wrong, I think that's a baby step. That's not an apology. Um, so, how to are me. you feeling when you get this voicemail? Yeah, so I got the voicemail and, you know, I talked to one of my girlfriends about it. I talked to my therapist and I said, I'm not calling her back at all. She has not. Ever. No, she, not as of right now, no, I'm not doing it because she, for a year, has ignored me. And my mother is dying of cancer. She hasn't reached out to me even one time. Thank you about that. But now she needs me and she's going to throw in an apology, even though she doesn't know what it's for. And if I do decide to talk with her, I will say something like, listen, we have unfinished business. I want to talk about this apology first. And I'm really shocked that you would ask me for something when you're apologizing. So maybe we could talk about that first. (laughs) What do you think it is? Um, Who knows? Money? Um, I don't know. Maybe money. I don't know. I'm not, I don't give anyone money anyway, but I don't know. Advice, money. (laughs) So you get so you get that article says you're point point one percent on OnlyFans. Do people come to you and all of a sudden they're like, "Hey, can I borrow two thousand dollars?" Um, no, 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 they don't. Um, no one's asked me for money. Okay. Yeah, no, no one's asked me for money. Um, That's but I good. Can, I don't know what she wanted. Maybe you know, a lot of times people come to me for like software kind of things. They need help. Um, I, I don't even know, and I don't care enough yeah. because, um, I just. I have room in my life for the people that really care. I have room for the people that love me like I love them. And um, I'm just not interested in having shallow acquaintances anymore. Life's too short and my life is too full. And she fucked up. And if she wants to apologize. She she fucked up. Yeah, come back and apologize. Like I need her to go, I can't believe I apologized and then asked you for something in the same sentence. Because I know she knows better. She's a smart girl. And I, okay. I, she'll figure it out. Yeah. No, no, thanks. <laughs> well, maybe, she, well, maybe she listens to my podcast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Hi, Tracy. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, That's really yeah, her name I, I don't too. Know. I'm in a weird place with apologies of the, like, I used to be like, oh, you said, I'm sorry, but, or you apologize for not. But then the more I realize, you know, when, when you're in therapy, you realize that you're picking people that, that are, that are exhibiting things that you've experienced mm-hmm. and you know where it's coming from. And so you isolate those things and then, and then. Eventually you go, okay, well, you're actually like the, the baby step of apologizing, um, is, is, is sometimes, um, a, a good starting position, Yeah, but it's hard. So like, I if, agree if with you. We really have all these, we have these rules in our head about the way an apology needs to go down for it to be, for it to be genuine. Yeah. Um, you're right. I think we need to pull back on that a little bit. I agree with you that the two the two punch the I'm sorry, but I don't know what I did. And can I have something that's not an apology to me? That's yeah. Well, that's really three. Yeah. Because for most people, I'm sorry, but is enough to go. Never mind. I'm not even, and then I'm sorry, but, and then also, can you help me? And then the fourth, like manipulative move where she's crying in the middle of it. Yeah. And not saying anything about my mother who she knows is sick and she hasn't called me for over a year and she's been gossiping about me. So there's just a whole bunch there. Um, I've been a doormat a bunch in my life and I've let people take advantage of me. So um, I really have to look at what is the value of this person in my life? Do I want them there in my life? And yeah, um, if I never see her again, am I okay with it? And today I am okay with that because that bullshit she came at me with um, a year later it isn't cutting it. I have too much going on yeah. and, but yeah, I do hear what you're saying and I agree with you. I just don't think this is that I, I really don't. Yeah. Well, these three years, um, but we're really, really highlight who are the people that you can rely on. Yep. Because you're not going through something tough, but you're putting yourself in a position, um, of, of, uh, judgment and other light. And so, uh, the people that can't find a way to acceptance about things that don't affect them. Yes. Um, yeah, those are really, um, so then on that note has, um, has it affected family relationships? Um, no, Mm-mm. no, it hasn't. Yeah, 
No. Um, I mean, I really am tied up. My mom really is very sick. And so what I do for a living, like, it's just not a thing. It's more, right. I'm an only child and I'm in charge of her care. My dad's an 80 year old Dago who's been with my mom since she was 15. And so yeah. he's kind of debilitated with like emotional pain. It's the one thing he can't do to fix. He can't fix her. He can't protect her from this one thing his whole right. life. And right. so now I'm in charge and I was always like the family fuck up. And now I'm like, holy shit, who put me in charge? <laughs> so now I'm in charge of that and I've had some other things happen and you know it's just it's really been a rough like 18 months for me for a variety of things I have yeah. truly never been under this amount of pressure and stress in my life so I just really need to surround myself with people who love me for me and aren't judging me and that know who I am and why I do what I do yeah I said something. I said something that I really felt that was like a huge life goal uh, recently, and anybody who was like started telling me the reasons why I couldn't accomplish that, I was like, "Oh, you're not, you're not on Team Dan." No, and that's that's not good enough. That's a problem. Like I said something crazy, and and then my friends were like, "I could see you doing that," and that's it. That's all. That's all you need. That's all you need in your life is those people. That's right. I could see that for you. Yeah. Thank um, you. Yeah. That's important. It is. Yeah. So you mark it on the age. You talk about the age. This is a thing that's been recurring in the last, and I think it's just my own mortality and my own <laughs> getting close to 40 that I think about it more. But it really is a trend in the industry where there was a point at some point um, in the past where um, once you got to a certain age, you got to go. Like that was the vibe. Yeah. And not that it was necessarily true. And yeah. I think it I think at times when there was toxic masculinity in charge, that really was a conversation. You gotta go. Yeah. Um, but then it was like an unwritten thing. Where you're three years in, how long do you think that you can uh that, that you want to first? That how long do you think you wanna be doing what you're doing? Yeah, so it was interesting when I started, I really didn't believe that there was this huge market for older women, the cougars, the MILFs. And, you know, I, a friend showed me some demographics and then I did my own research and I was like, holy shit, like MILFs and cougars and teachers are higher um, in the list of things that are searched on porn sites and Google than teen than like everything like it's crazy how popular they are and i still didn't believe it until i had launched my page and then six weeks later i was like holy shit this is nuts but i'm kind of going in um you know i'm still doing my only fans i'm still doing um i do a lot of creator kind of stuff and i'm kind of branching out into the non-porny space as well and i'm enjoying that where i just get to be because i'm really a big goof and i'm like yeah a boomer goof kind of and so i'm kind of branching out in that direction and i don't know how long my body will hold out um with the porn stuff <laughs> but well so i want so i want to there's a i have a couple little little uh little flutters in there so number one um, I think you could totally go any other route, right? Uh, because I think that's, that's what we've learned is that because the, the, um, the, the value or I guess lack of value, um, having a naked photo of you running around the internet, like it used to be that like, if you have naked photos, you couldn't do the things right. Yeah. And now that that doesn't exist, um, you can take this following into any other aspect of being, a personality and, a, and yeah. a content creator. Um, number two, I think, I think my, my, my idea that like people were being kicked out at some point is what drives the, the need. Yes. Right. And the niche. Yeah. Um, because it, it's something that's not really out there. And it was a thing that we were like, I, you know, I find it very um, upsetting that like, as I, as I get older, I don't think I'm less sexy. I'm just as horny. And I want to be with people m my age. Yeah. And there's not a lot of me finding those yeah. people <laughs> on the internet. Yeah. And that's, and that's frustrating. And I think that's the, that's the driving force of that whole, of that whole notion. Yeah. Um, I, I forgot what my, I forgot what my third flutter was, but what other things do you, do you attribute um, the success of that category, um, um, for you. there are fewer people, um, in the category and there's, a, there's a happy medium and whether, regardless of your age, you really have to understand, um, how to 
um, engage an audience across social media. I and I do the best that I can um, because you know my Twitter following is pretty big. I lost my big TikTok, but I'm back. I have like 160 thousand again on my. They new pulled one. your TikTok as well. Oh yeah, I've lost like eight TikTok. TikToks. They, what was the infraction on TikTok? I was wearing a turtleneck and corduroy pants and sitting in a bathtub. They just hate. I don't know. What did they, they what hate, did they say? They hate porn stars. They don't tell you anything. Boom, gone. Page is gone. Yeah. Yeah. And you try yeah, to so get this it This is what's frustrating. And this, again, this is, this is another recurring theme where it's like, we're relying on these social media platforms for so much and they fail us so mm-hmm. often. And then now we're relying on OnlyFans and they, and they've shown us some interesting things yes. um, about whether or not they're going to be loyal. And that is so frustrating. And, and, you know, I don't have a, a good solution, but a, um, an easy solution would no. be uh, that isn't easy is to have this industry control those, those things. Yeah. Um, so that they don't, Pass judgment, take away, make up weird rules. Yeah, right. Like, nice. I think we all understand that Twitter is where you can see uh, genitals, and so the if we want to see genitals on social media, we go to Twitter. Yeah, and so we need another genitals uh, social media. Genital platform. friendly, yeah. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> JF. Yeah. Uh, GF. Sorry, I'm an idiot. Um, the uh, and then and then I also I'm also starting to realize there are way more OnlyFans rules than I thought. Um, and 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 we go into those a lot in other podcasts. So we don't need to uh, go into them, but they, they they shock me the amount of little tick, ticky tacky kind of things where it's like, well, yeah, you're standing here, so you can't do that. Yeah, I um, did a video. Sheree Deville and I did a role play video called Hollywood Escort, and we shot a video where we were in a hotel room and we were bringing an escort back for our boyfriend and. Um, you can't write the word escort on OnlyFans. So we have to do like Crazy. a zero. And then um, panty stuffing, which a lot of my fans like, which I didn't even know. I- I'm pretty vanilla when it comes to a lot of the fetishes. But they're like, do you have any panty stuffing videos? And I'm like. Well, explain to me what panty stuffing is. Yeah, I didn't know either. I had to Google. I've had to Google a lot of shit. Um, sure. It's where you take off your panties and you put them in your vagina and stir them around in there. And then you slowly pull them out and then you smell them, put them in your mouth. Why I, is that a problem? Right. Well, I guess the one of the rules on OnlyFans is you can't put anything in your body that isn't supposed to go in your body. Like, how do you get it? Like, who... Is. Who says what's supposed know, to go in there? I don't even know. Right. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what that means. I just I just ate a bunch of stuff that shouldn't go in my body, yeah. technically. Story of my and life. those companies are making a lot of money. So I don't even know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> um what what do you what are you doing? I don't want to go negative, but what are you doing wrong? What could you be doing better in 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 this thing that you're focusing on? Um, you know, do you mean in porn world? Yeah. Yeah. Oh gosh, I'm so critical on myself. So, um, I always think I could be marketing better, um, finding the new latest and greatest way to market. Um, I do the best I can to engage with my fans on every platform and it is exhausting. That's why I was, you know, in the messages, I try to respond to every comment and, um, and I think that's necessary because I, I do care. I do care about my audience. I do care about the fans. Um, I could probably um, give myself a little more slack. I haven't had a day off since March 30th of 2020, and I need a break. You track that. What's that? You track that for yourself. Yeah, I didn't even have to. I just know I haven't. Yeah, that was the day I started, and I haven't had a day off since. (laughs) Yeah, literally not a day off. Yeah, one of the trending one of the trending uh, uh, um, um, audios on TikTok is this one about like uh, I hated having a nine to five, so I started my own business and now I work twenty four seven. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and they get mad sometimes. I'm like, I have to sleep. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. I could be more organized um, with that, I suppose. We uh, we've 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 said and done a lot. This is a very dense episode. Um, we're at we're at a good mark for I think when people like to hear um, what's going on. Um, I wanted to ask you briefly about the graduate, which seems to be the source material for your name. Yeah. Um, was this like an impactful film for you? It's I mean it's really it's a um, it's like a it's like a cultural phenomenon. Yeah. And it's it's always it's like it's like the quickest easiest way for people to understand. Um, older woman, young man. Yeah. Um, wh- where does it come from for you, and how deep does it go? 
goes pretty deep. My high school boyfriend and I, I was with him for 10 years um, into college. We used to watch old movies together. You know, we watched Grace Kelly and one night we watched The Graduate. And I remember at 17 years old thinking to myself, she's a badass. <laughs> like I really clung, like I was clinging onto her. Like I, I need to be a badass like her. Yeah. When I grow up. This is what, late 70s, right? This was 1987. 87. It was later than I thought. Yeah, okay. was, that was 17 and 87. And and there was like no like boss bitch characters at the time. No. And really for a long time after that, there was like crazy bitch might cut your penis off yeah. characters. But there wasn't like boss bitch characters. No, Stifler's mom and Stacy's mom. That was it after that. But I just yeah. remember. And, and, and arguably Stifler's mom is not really like a, a, a very powerful. Yeah. Um, yeah character she's just she's just sort of used as this um sexualized thing yeah right yes exactly so yeah i am bancroft i was like she's a badass and when i was trying to come up with my name or not trying to come up with it but somebody said what are you thinking about for your stage name and i sat for a minute and normally i brainstorm i've got charts out and everything and i just sat there and i went ha, mrs robinson and that was Boom. it yeah and it's so, and again, like it's, it's brilliant. It's so fast. Yeah. You know? It's so fast from a marketing perspective. The original title of this podcast was porn stars are people. And, and for me, that was like, same thing. It's like, boom, you know what it's about. Right. Yeah. And unfortunately those words strung together for some reason are, uh, the opposite, uh, of clickbait. They're like, they're like target bait and they're kryptonite bait for the internet. Yeah. Um, but sometimes it's just the smartest and that's what, and that's also what was fun about that period of time was before we were saying, all the words, all the dirty words explicitly, we were, we knew ways to say them without saying them. Yes. And, and they're just like ingrained and, and just to that Mrs. Robinson, it just nails it right in. And by the way, if anybody's not seen this movie, uh, the graduate, I think it's a good time to, to go yes. uh, find out where that is on streaming. Public. And I did remake it too. So if you do want to come to my only fans, um, you can go to Mrs. Robinson dot fans and request graduation gift and it is me reenacting um in a boy girl sex tape the mrs robinson movie so well let's get that thing sold yeah um, <laughs> okay but, uh, so quick 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 psa please pay for your porn please check out all the platforms where people are doing the things if you're not paying for the stuff that you're jerking off to uh chances are like 100 that you're the person that you're jerking off to is not making money off of that thing. So please keep your favorite people in this business. I've seen so many of my favorite porn stars um, mm -hmm. from when I was 20 to 35 um, have to leave because it doesn't seem like we're making a living. So let's keep these people making a living. Thank you. Um, and let's stay sex positive. Let's, let's, let's not be in a place where, where you're jerking off uh, at 3 p.m. and then judging somebody at 5 p.m. I think that's a weird idea. Um, let's look at our own hypocrisies. I think we're all full of shit, and I think we need to look in the mirror a little bit. Oh, I love uh, that. How do we find you? How do we follow you? I cannot, um, I cannot put... Uh, the OnlyFans stuff in the in the comments anymore because it gets flagged on YouTube. Okay. Um, so that's a shame. So please, I'm finding little ways to work around it, but please uh, tell us where to find you, where to follow you, how to pay for your stuff. Yeah. So um, I do. If you come to my Instagram right now, it's called Let Mrs R Live <laughs> because they keep taking my Instagram down. But you can come to my Twitter, which is Mrs Robinson XO. All of my links are there. But if you want to come straight to my OnlyFans, which I know you do, come to Mrs Robinson Fans. Mention that you saw me on Dan's podcast, and I will send you a little freebie. <laughs> All right, we love that. Um, we drop a new episode every Sunday. This one's this one's live to the to the moment. It's actually not Sunday; it's Monday. It's Monday morning, uh, midnight. Uh, this one's gonna be live. This one's literally coming out this week. Um, uh, wherever you see podcasts, listen to podcasts, we're on the other thing. If you're on Apple, we're on Google and all the other stuff. We're on Android. Uh, we have some content today on YouTube. Uh, please check it out there. The Porn Stars Are People and the Sexy People Podcast YouTubes are in peril because of some of the comment stuff with the OnlyFans. So you can go to uh, YouTube.com slash Dan Fregolette to see this stuff. Um, thank you so much to my guest for being here. Dan, um, Dan, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And it meant a lot to me that we were able to spend this time together. So thank you. And um, thank you for what you bring to the podcast oh. world. Well, thank you. I appreciate that uh, very much. So much that I'm probably blushing and I don't know how to take compliments. <laughs> You're an incredible guest. Uh, I'd love to interview you again. I feel like we've only scratched the surface on the depth of your knowledge and understanding of things. So thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. <laughs>